Okay, so the first item I really wanted to talk about, speak about, speak of, speak to, speak as, and speak from, is eternity. Um, or, let me see, I need, these might take a few videos to get like all the depth out of it, to really take the inquiry process and, and really dig out the, 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 the insights. So, and some of them you might have to listen to several times before you, uh, you get all of the, the juice out of it. That's the insights. And some of them might hit you later, and maybe another day. But the point is this. I wanted to talk about eternity, infinity and existence. And mostly to start off with, it, it really puts the entire universe in perspective. So uh, let me just start and see where it goes from there. But the point is this. There is only now, and this now is eternity itself. So eternity is not something that is in time. It's not like infinite time. It's not like, you know, an infinite past and an infinite future and this tiny little slice of now in which is moving across the timeline. There's, there's no such thing as time. Time is just a concept. In other words, time is the appearance of um, a, a seeming moving world because of objects. But the now itself, eternity, the now itself doesn't move. I mean, this whole now isn't going anywhere. It's just, boom, eternity. It is now. It's not moving through time. What is moving through time, apparently, which is not moving through time at all, is that within eternity, there is a, a much lower function, which is memory or objects. And we have this memory of objects. In other words, if my hand is over here, like a clock ticking, tick, 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 tick. We can say from the perspective of objects that my hand has moved and there was five seconds before it started here and then tick, 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 tick. And every second it moved a certain amount of time. But that's only because we take this thing where it was, let's say, to where it's now and say, oh, I remember that it was here and therefore time must have passed. Well, time hasn't really passed. It's just that within eternity, the, the now allowed objects to move. It allowed change. Just because there's change in objects, it doesn't um, subject the eternity to time. Eternity is not affected by um, time in that sense. Time is just a thing allowed within the eternal, right? So this thing is going to be deepened out in the videos to come and it might be like three or four or five videos, I don't know. But the point is this, there is only the eternal now. And within this now, the unmoving now, the timelessness of now, which is not moving anywhere, you're not going to get better or in the future because there's only now, there is no future. The only reason future seems to be so, or past seems to be so, is that we give more importance to objects. In other words, instead of noticing the, inf the, the eternal now not moving anywhere, we give precedence to objects. And when you give as the awareness of the eternal, in the, the, if the eternal awareness that we are gives more importance to objects, we put these objects first and we think that the entire thing of objects is moving through time, which certainly is the case from the perspective of that uh, wrong identification or lower level of functioning. There is eternity first and it doesn't go anywhere. It never has changed, but it allows an infinite amount of change to objects. Once you give your attention only to the objects, the object seems so important that when you follow an object, forgetting that it's happening within this eternal non-moving now, once you take all your attention on the objects, we say, oh, look, 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 you see? Oh, everything is moving. Yeah, because you're still focused on the objects. But the objects are secondary to the thing in which it takes place. Eternity isn't going anywhere. It never has, it never will, it doesn't move. It's not subject to movement. Objects are subject to movement. And that we then can remember and we remember the day when I was a child or last month or last year. And we say, oh, my God, time is moving, right? There's past, there's future, and we're moving along that kind of line. No, that's only when you are in the memory. When the function of memory is used, it seems to be time. So in other words, to sum it up, time 
is therefore the illusion that is created when the attention is put on the function of memory. In other words, the function of memory effectuates the illusion of time. It is because of memory of objects, you can only remember objects, right? So if we take one object here, and then it's over here, and then it's over here, and then it's over here, we say, oh look, he was once a baby and now he's an old man, and therefore time must have passed. No, what happened is there's the eternal now, and with the eternal now there is changing of objects. And when the objects are focused on and memorized, then they, they, in the memory they are compared and said, oh, there was once a form that was young and now it became an old man. And therefore, the conclusion is, there is time. And there certainly is at the objective level. There certainly is, because it's, so, so, but that's only relevant to the lesser, in other words, the inferior or the secondary function of form and therefore memory, form plus memory. Right? So when you have form, and you add memory to it, it gives the illusion of time. And therefore, eternity is now, and it doesn't go anywhere. But eternity is so magnificent that within it, it allows form, which is infinity. The infinite changing of all possible combinations of things. Always changing, always in flux, always moving. The objective world coming and going, everything like clouds in the sky and thoughts in the mind and bodies across the planet and whatever you want to call it, right? In other words, once your attention goes too much on that, plus you live in the memory, which is where most people now live in this, this world, looking through picture books of last year's holidays and stuff like that, they live as though they are a historical creature living in time because to them the objects are precedent, are more important than the very fact that all things are now. Eternity is therefore put second, and memory and objects is put first. When memory and objects are put first, the, the illusion of time seems the only thing that is absolute. It seems like time is, is, is an absolute to the human mind that is still in delusion, because it hasn't seen that the eternal presence doesn't move anywhere at all. So that's the first video to make sure that when we talk about eternity, that we have a good grasp on the fact that eternity is not infinite time. Right? Eternity is now. There is only now. And it doesn't go anywhere. And that's why it's eternal. Mm -hmm.